This is a temporary version of the video. This video deals with how to obtain the Euler equation in the so-called uh, consumption savings problem. In this video, we'll try to show you how to obtain the Euler equation in a version of the uh, consumption savings problem, which is, we'll say, well behaved. It means there is nothing uh, surprising in uh, the version of the uh, problem that I will show you. I will also show you what the Euler equation does and what it's useful for in a simple case where we can actually carry out the computation in a simple way, which is the case of the uh, log utility. So what's this consumption savings problem about? Well, we have an individual that will live in two different periods, period 1 and period 2. This individual has income omega 1 in period 1 and omega 2 in period 2 and he or she uh, needs to co choose uh, consumption C1 and C2 in each period and depending on the uh, consumption choice this individual will have to choose how much to borrow or how much to save uh, between uh, the two periods. So the convention that we'll use here is that B is the amount that is uh, borrowed. In this problem we assume that the individual has access to um, perfect financial markets where the, um, these markets um, charge an interest rate uh, of R. If the agent wants to save, then he or she will choose uh, to borrow a negative amount by convention. So this B can be uh, strictly negative here. The individual has the following preferences about consumption, so the uh, intertemporal utility, big U, that depends on both consumption in period 1 and consumption in period 2, is equal to the uh, single period uh, utility, small u, of C1, plus beta, small u, of C2, with this beta here between 0 and 1 that we will call the uh, rate of time preference. The fact that beta is smaller than 1 reflects the fact that you'd rather have your consumption right now in period 1 compared to having some uh, consumption in the future in period 2. As usual, the agent's consumption choices are subject to budget constraints in each period. At the beginning, there are actually two different budget constraints in each period. In period 1, when the agent is young, the agent will have to borrow if B is positive or lend if B is negative. And then the budget constraint writes as follows. The uh, consumption C1 needs to be smaller or equal than the endowment omega 1 plus the amount that the agent borrows if he or she uh, chooses to do so. When the agent is old in the second period, the agent will have to pay back uh, the amount that he or she borrowed or it will be paid back the amount that he uh, saved and that he lent so that the um, budget constraint uh, is as follows C2, the consumption in period 2 is uh, smaller or equal than the endowment omega 2 minus the amount that needs to be paid back 1 plus R times B, so that's the amount that was borrowed with the interest. Originally we have two different constraints in each period, but these two constraints can actually be collapsed into a single one. So that's equivalent from the point of view of mathematics of solving for a small b or eliminating a small b. So we have these two equations, C1 is equal to omega 1 plus b and C2 is equal to omega 2 minus 1 plus r times b. should uh, remark here that I've replaced these uh, inequalities by uh, equalities because at the optimum when the individual makes the uh, best possible choice these two uh, budget constraints will be saturated, meaning that consumption is as high as possible, so nothing is wasted. So what I'm doing here is that I'm adding the first equation, the one in period 1, with the second one in period 2, but the second one is divided by 1 plus r. So on the uh, left hand side of the equation we have c1 plus c2 divided by 1 plus r. 
and on the right hand side of the equation we have omega 1 plus b plus omega 2 divided by 1 plus r minus 1 plus r times b divided by 1 plus r. The terms with b that are on the right hand side simplify so that uh, the right hand side is equal to omega 1 plus omega 2 divided by 1 plus r. We introduce a new notation for the right hand side. This is equal to omega, the uh, total endowment. This collapsed constraint that contains the uh, constraints in both periods links consumption and income across time. So you have C1 plus C2 over 1 plus R, which is equal to omega 1 plus omega 2 divided by 1 plus R. Because it links consumption and income across time, it's called the uh, intertemporal budget constraint. On the left hand side, we have what is called the uh, net present value of consumption. So it's all the value of all the consumption in both periods, but the uh, second period consumption is discounted by 1 plus the interest rate. And the right hand side, omega 1 plus omega 2 divided by 1 plus r, is equivalently the uh, net present value of income. We are now able to write uh, the full problem. So the full problem for the individual is to uh, maximize the uh, intertemporal utility, big U of C1 and C2, with respect to uh, C1, C2, and B. You should remember that uh, B is still there, but it's hidden at the moment. And this intertemporal uh, utility is maximized subject to the intertemporal budget constraint. So we are in the case of a constraint optimization problem with a single constraint. What we are going to do is use the Lagrange method and so we'll transform this problem into a simpler and constrained uh, optimization problem. So I write the uh, Lagrangian L of C1, C2 and lambda which is equal to the objective U of C1 plus beta U of C2 plus lambda times the thing that needs to remain weakly positive, so positive or equal to zero, omega minus C1 minus C2 over 1 plus r. The um, parameter lambda here is the Lagrange multiplier associated with the uh, intertemporal budget constraint. So we need to maximize this Lagrangian with respect to C1, C2 and lambda. One thing we should remember is that C1 and C2 have to respect some conditions to be acceptable solutions. Namely, C1 needs to be bigger or equal than zero, and C1 needs to be smaller or equal uh, One thing we need to remember is that for these solutions to be acceptable from the economic point of view, we need C1 to be between 0 and omega, and also C2 needs to be between 0 and omega times 1 plus r. This is due to the fact that you can at most uh, consume everything in period 1 or consume nothing in period 1 and then consume everything in period 2. Now, depending on the exact problem that you have here, that depends on the um, form of the utility function, on the value of beta, and also on the value of the interest rate, you can have two types of solutions to this problem. The first type of solution is called the corner solution. So it can be either the case where C1 is equal to 0 and C2 is equal to omega times 1 plus r, or the opposite case where C1 is equal to omega and C2 is equal to zero. So that corresponds to the cases where you consume everything either in period one or in period two. These are extreme cases, which we call corner solutions. There is the second type of solutions, which is in a way more common, which we call uh, interior solutions. These correspond to cases where C1 is 
strictly between 0 and omega and C2 is strictly between 0 and omega times uh, 1 plus r. In this video I won't talk about the cases where uh, we need to find a corner solution. I'm just going to talk about what happens if the solution turns out to be an interior one. During the TA classes you'll have time to uh, learn how to deal with the um, corner solution situations. If the solution is an interior one, then we'll be able to use first order conditions to find it. There is basically here uh, one optimality condition, one first order condition for each variable. So the first order condition with respect to C1, dl over dc1 is equal to zero, is equivalent to uh, lambda being equal to u prime of C1. Or u prime of C1 is the uh, marginal utility of uh, consumption in period one. The second first order condition is dl over dc2 is equal to zero, which is equivalent to beta u prime of c2 is equal to uh, lambda over one plus r. And the last one uh, with respect to uh, lambda, dl over d lambda is equal to zero, is equivalent to uh, c1 plus c2 over one plus r is equal to omega, which is the uh, intertemporal budget constraint. Now, if I wanted to be uh, extra rigorous. I shouldn't have written these, uh, this last first order condition uh, as dl over d lambda is equal to zero. If you want to learn about the true version of this last condition called the slackness condition, then you'll have to wait for a proper optimization course. But for what we're doing in this video and in this course, what I've done is uh, more than enough. So now we have our three first order conditions. What we're going to do is combine uh, the first two ones together in order to obtain the uh, Euler equation. So one way to do it is to uh, rewrite the uh, second equation and replace uh, lambda by u prime of c1. Then we obtain beta u prime of c2 is equal to u prime of c1 divided by 1 plus r. I will slightly uh, rearrange the terms in order to get u prime of c1 divided by u prime of c2 is equal to uh, beta times 1 plus r, which is the uh, standard form to write uh, the Euler equation. Now that we've obtained this Euler equation, we still need to know how to use it. Actually, the uh, main point of this Euler equation is that it gives us a relationship between C1 and C2 when, when the individual uh, acts uh, in an optimal way, gives you the um, way in which uh, consumption evolves through time. In micro, you would say that it gives you the marginal rate of substitution between consumption in period 1 and consumption in period 2. But we still have only one relationship between C1 and C2, and we need another one. The other relationship that will help you and allow you to solve for C1 and C2 is the intertemporal budget constraint, which I denote uh, IBC as an equation. Once you have these two equations, the Euler equation and the intertemporal budget constraint, you now have two equations for two unknowns, C1 and C2, which you're trying to compute, then you're able to find C1 and C2 as a function of the utility function, the value of beta, and the value of the interest rate. So that's always the way in which you should proceed in order to find C1 and C2 in this consumption savings problem. You should always um, first compute the Euler equation and then combine the Euler equation and the intertemporal budget constraint to find uh, the value of C1 and C2. Now let's take a quick look at what happens when uh, we're in a spatial case where U of C, the um, single period utility, is equal to the log of C. In that case, the uh, marginal utility from consumption is 1 over C, so that the uh, Euler equation writes C2 over C1 is equal to beta times 1 plus r. Now we'll combine this Euler equation with the uh, intertemporal budget constraint 
and we have to uh, replace uh, C2 by uh, its expression in terms of C1. We obtain C1 plus beta C1 over 1 plus R divided by 1 plus R is equal to omega. We just have to uh, simplify by 1 plus R here and we obtain C1 times 1 plus beta is equal to omega. So that in the end C1 is equal to omega divided on 1 plus beta. So you consume a fraction of the uh, net present value of your income in the first period and C2 is equal to beta over 1 plus beta times omega, the remaining fraction, times 1 plus r because uh, what you've saved uh, in the first period is uh, multiplied by uh, 1 plus r. Now in order to allow you to check that you've understood properly uh, what happens in this situation, I'm asking you a few questions that you should be able to answer. You should be able to know uh, what happens when beta over 1 plus r is smaller than 1. In particular, you should be able to compare C1 and C2. You should also be able to uh, tell me something about what happens when beta over 1 plus r is equal to 1. And you should also be able to uh, give me an interpretation about what happens in these two cases uh, in terms of economics. You have now reached the end of the video about the Euler equation. You should know by now how to uh, derive this uh, equation uh, in the framework of the uh, consumption savings uh, problem and you should also know um, why uh, you should care about it, why it's useful. As usual, feel free to uh, share your thoughts and comments about this video uh, through uh, the uh, usual means.